This is the second part of lesson B, and there will be quite a few parts to this. So um, I'm going to continue with the example on page 10, B.1. We just found the area of this figure. Now we're going to look at finding the perimeter. And again, we're going to divide this up into well-known figures, a triangle, a half circle, and a rectangle. So the perimeter, then, is the distance around. So this, this, and this are going to be pretty easy because I'm just going to add those up. The only thing that's going to be a little bit more difficult is the, the circumference of that half circle. But my circumference of a half circle is going to be pi 2 pi r. And if I know my r, which in this case is 2, so 2 times 2 times pi gives me 4 pi. But again, we're only looking at half a circle, so we're going to divide that by 2. So that's actually only 2 pi or... 6.28. So if we added this and these three numbers together, we would get 22.28 as far as the perimeter. Now this next example is asking us to do something a little bit different. Uh, they're giving us a rectangle, and they're giving us a circle inside the rectangle, and they're also giving us a triangle inside the rectangle, a right triangle. And they're saying this is 5 and this is 6. And they're interested in finding the area of everything that's not the circle or the triangle. So everything that I've got here that's outside the circle and the triangle. So the way they do that is they find the area, which they've said this is 15 and this is 10. So the area of that whole rectangle is 150. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the circle and that is pi r squared so that is going to be uh, 16 pi and uh, then they're going to ask us to find the area of the triangle and that is 1 half base times h or 1 half, the base is 5, the uh, height is 6, so that's 30, and so that equals 15. So we're going to take 150, which is the area of the entire rectangle, we're going to subtract 16 pi, and we're going to subtract 15, and get our answer of 84.76. Okay, so this next section has to do with um, volume. Volume is three-dimensional. Bottom of page 10, it gives you um, what a three-dimensional cube looks like. And uh, what we're doing here as far as volume is concerned is three dimensions means that we're multiplying three things. Now, when we were doing area, if we had the area of a square of a rectangle, and this was six and this was four, we multiplied two numbers, two dimensions. So that's a two-dimensional object. It's flat. It's on a plane. But when we have a three-dimensional object, we are multiplying the uh, length times the width, but we're also multiplying it times the height, and that gives us our third dimension. And uh, anytime we have something that's three dimensions, it's called a geometric solid. And uh, when our geometric solid when our vertical line, when our height is um, perpendicular to the base, it's called a right geometric solid or just a right solid. And uh, that's pretty much a lot that we're going to be looking at right now. <clears throat> Bottom of page 11, there's a list of five different geometric solids that are right. We've got an oval, a circular, a triangular cylinder, a rectangular cylinder, and a right cylinder. And these cylinders can pretty much look like anything you want. And all we're doing in order to find the volume is we're taking the area of the base and then multiplying it by how, by how high it is. 
So if we were to look at uh, page number 12, it gives us a bunch of different um, three-dimensional objects. I guess specifically in the middle of the page, it gives you a circular cone. And notice the right circular cone has the, the vertex or the point straight up above the uh, center point of the circle that's the base. And then we have a cone pyramid, and then a cone, and then we have a sphere. And they do not give you the formula to find the volume of a sphere. So it might be good to write this down. Let me go ahead and put this down for you. We take 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So that's the, uh, the volume of a, of a sphere. And uh, the volume of a sphere, bottom of page 12, says it's two-thirds the volume of the cylinder. So you can find the volume of a cylinder and then take two-thirds of that, and that would give you the volume of the, the sphere that has the same radius. But let's look particularly at page 13 at example B.3. And it gives us a funny-shaped object. I'm not even going to attempt to draw that. But it says the area of the base is 242, and they want you to find the volume. Well, in order to find the volume, like I said before, is you find the area of the base, multiply it by its height. So they've already told us the area is 242, and they've also told us that the height is 10, so you just multiply those two numbers together and you get the volume. If you look at example B.4, it's the same thing. They give you the area of the base already, and you multiply it by its height, and that gives you um, the volume. But one of the things to keep in mind is we're talking about, look at the instructions there. It says find the volume of this cone. So the volume of a cone is one-third the area of the base times its height. So that means the volume of a cone is one-third the base times height. It'd help if I'd write a three there, wouldn't it? One-third... Um, the area of the base times the height. So I guess it's not one-half the base, it's the area of the base times the height. And in this case, the base is 242. We multiply that by one-third, or divide by three, and then multiply that by its height, which in this case is 10. Now on B.5, it says find the volume of a sphere. <clears throat> and it says that the radius is 3 centimeters. And that's all they give you is the radius is 3 centimeters. But that's okay because all we care about is the radius. So volume equals 4 thirds pi. And what did they say the radius was? 3 centimeters. So 4 thirds pi times 27. So we multiply all that out, and we end up getting 30. We actually end up getting, when we do it by 3.14, um, we actually get 113.04. Now the book left it as 36 pi. They, mul they did not multiply 36 times 3.14. I prefer this as an answer rather than using 3.14 because then that's just an estimate. So 36 pi would be a better answer for me.